Good morning everyone, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're enjoying any extra freedoms we've got these days and I hope you're good. Today we're launching a new series on Axe and I'm going to talk to you about a spirit forming community. I've got a few questions here to start with. Have you ever thought to yourself, what is what is the point of the church? Why, why do we do what we do? Can we make any difference in our community and in the wider world? Can we actually make any difference? <laughs> and this seems like a bit of a negative starting point, but these are fair enough questions to ask ourselves because unfortunately there are millions of people in our country today who believe the church is completely irrelevant to their lives. They've, got, they've either had no interaction with the church, so why would they see it as relevant? And we aspire to be an open church with a focus on outreach. So what can we learn from the early church today? We need to ask ourselves these most basic questions so we can be sure about who we are. Now the early church was, was an exciting place to be. Reading through this passage the, and the rest of the book of Acts, they were alive with the Holy Spirit. They, it was moving through them in amazing ways. If we look at the passage, there are five characteristics that epitomise the early church community at this time. Now the first is unity. They were focused on God. They were a full-on community. They lived the gospel. The early church knew why they existed. They were unified about that purpose. If we look at Acts 4, 32 and 33, it says... All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. So Jesus had enlisted these followers, not not to a life of leisure. This wasn't going to be an easy life. This wasn't going to be easy street. This was a life of, of service and hard work. And while each of them had a different task in this, um, this community, they all had the same calling, and that was to fulfil the Great Commission. They were focused. They had one leader, and that was Jesus. And they had one purpose, and that was to communicate the gospel to all people. And then we see this again in, in Paul, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We can be different, but united through the Holy Spirit. Just as one body, just as a body though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one Spirit, so as to perform to a form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. We were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. So even though they were all of different nationalities, people of different backgrounds, they were united behind that single purpose. And the second is boldness. They were bold. Now the passage starts, if you go back to chapter tw verse 23, the first words are, on their release. And that's because we pick up the story in Acts just where, as what Peter and John have been released from prison. What they'd done is they'd healed a man at the gates of the temple and the religious leaders were upset by this because these disciples had claimed that they had healed the man through the power of Jesus Christ. And the religious leaders took this as a threat to their own authority. So they had been arrested, put in prison and ordered not to preach Jesus Christ anymore. But Peter and John refused to follow that order. They um, saying that it's more important for them to obey Jesus Christ than obey the courts. <laughs> obey God, sorry, than obey the courts. Outside the courthouse, in the streets, there were thousands of people praising God and celebrating what they'd seen through this ministry. Of all... So the disciples and the authorities knew that they had to release Peter and John. So they released them. And that's where we pick this story up. So Peter and John have returned to the rest of the disciples and they're telling them what's happened. So they're being persecuted just for their faith in Jesus Christ, for, for proclaiming the gospel. They're being persecuted. 
And even though they were facing trial and they were put in prison, they, they would not give up on their purpose. They, they knew that any earthly persecution was, was no way near as important as um, the work of, of God and following Jesus. And this we see, you know, we see this throughout the world today. Uh, you know, you look at all the persecuted churches throughout the world today. So the third is generosity. So the early church was incredibly generous. You know, possessions were no longer seen as their own. There, there was a, a system of common support. There was no one needy. And, you know, Joseph, who is also called Barnabas, and you see Barnabas later in, in Acts, he's um, often seen with Paul as one of Paul's missionaries. He sells a film, puts the money at the disciples' feet. And then this goes back to, you know, the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 15, chapter 4. There need be no poor people among you, for in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess as your inheritance. He will richly bless you. So they lived this. They, you know, the rich sold their land. They didn't necessarily sell everything, but they sold what they needed to, to help the poor. So in this community, there was no one in need. And the fourth is power, the power of the Holy Spirit. So we've spoken many times in the past about the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit. But this time of immense power, there was immense power in the Holy Spirit. People were, you know, people would notice mass gatherings, publicly praying in tongues. And if we go back to Paul's um, Corinthians chapter 12, you know, there, there, were, some, there were some pretty amazing powerful gifts and fruits of the spirit so some of the gifts are so to one there is spirit a message of wisdom to another knowledge by means of the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing or by that one spirit to another miraculous powers to another prophecy and to another distinguishing between spirits and to another speaking in different kinds of tongue and still to another the interpretation of those those tongues so in this, in this community, all of these gifts would have been visible. There would have been these wide manifestations of the Spirit. So it talks about how we can be united using all of our gifts. And this comes back to the unity. You know, the Holy Spirit is the centre of this community with this power behind it. The power comes from the Holy Spirit. And then the final one is grace. Because of all the unity, generosity and the focus on God, the church was full of grace. They, they prayed to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit filled them up. They were filled in abundance. You know, it's this culmination of these other four characteristics that were focused on God. God was at the centre and they were filled and blessed by God. So when we look at the church today it can feel like maybe faith has been privatised somehow people are happy to accept your faith as long as you don't talk to anyone about it I know there are times in my life where I've gone to church on a Sunday and thought well that's that for another week um, church became a Sunday morning thing the rest of the week it just wasn't as important but if we look back at the early church it was just the opposite of that and, you know, we can, how can we aspire to be more like the early church? You know, and first things first, it's clear God is at the centre of everything. They have complete faith in God. And if we go back to the beginning of the passage again, it says as soon as they were released, they, they prayed to God loudly. And they pray um, from Psalm 2. So it's sort of, why do the, why do the nations conspire why do the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against, against the Lord and against his, his anointed. This community would have been together praising God and evangelising daily. How can we be a more outward facing community? So we can be bold. We too can be bold. We can be bold like them. We are lucky to live in the United Kingdom 
and we don't face arrest, we don't face persecution. And we look at other um, persecuted Christian uh, communities, and they're them they they're growing despite the fact they're heavily persecuted. So we can be bold with our faith. We can take risks. We can talk to people. What the worst thing we can get is a few hurty words. Someone can say they're not interested in a, an abrupt or blunt way. The vast majority of people just say they are interested. It is Britain. We're polite. You know, if the disciples can be imprisoned, we can evangelise. We can follow their example. Praise the Lord. We can pray for the boldness. We can, we can you know, their boldness was a gift from God received through prayer. It's not something they try to work in themselves. So if we pray for boldness, we can have boldness. Next thing, we can be generous. Now, I'm not for one thing saying, sell all of your possessions, give them to Holy Trinity Dean's hangar, and let James distribute them as part of a community. I wouldn't. Um, but they did that, as that's what they felt they had to do at the time. But we can help the poor. We can... Ignore this cultural consumerism, this um, materialism, this desire for worldly things. You know, we, see, we live in a society today where you have to have the best, the shiniest. Um, you know, if you look at things, you have to have the best phone, you have to have the biggest telly, the shiniest car. You know, we can do without a lot of that. Um, we don't have, you know, we can do without, without some of it. We're so... The majority of us are so blessed we have enough money to survive. And we can, we can help other people. We can give our money to the poor. We can also be united and, and full of grace. Now, it's easy to say united. It's difficult, isn't it? Because particularly in the Church of England, the problem with the Church over the last 2,000 years or so has been division rather than uniting. People disagree, so rather than trying to sort it out, and remember their focus on God, they divide and they move into a different, a different church that sets up around what they agree with. But we can, so this is difficult, and I don't believe, we know that the apostles didn't always get on with everyone. They didn't. <laughs> so they, they can disagree, but they can still be united. Um... You know, so we can. How can we build that relationship with our our fellow our fellow members? You know, talks that no member was left needy. And we can look at this in a support way too, emotional support. We can, you know, if we can build a relationship, a strong relationship, a strong community with each other. You know, if we meet more than just on a Sunday morning. Now I know this is not the time to be talking about meeting more often. But hopefully in the not too distant future we can we can meet meet again in face to face. We can have our our groups back as as groups that meet physically. And even though now we have things like Skype and Zoom and we can build that relationship with each other using this equipment. And if we get that relationship going, if we get to know each other, if we get to know each other's strengths and weaknesses. We can then look at everyone's talents and then we can build this body and we can have this strong missional community. Now, we won't always agree. The disciples didn't, always, didn't agree. But with the focus on God and the grace and f of God, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, all of these characteristics are countercultural. But when we focus on God, we pray with the Holy Spirit at the centre of our community, we can be bold, we can be united, we can be full of grace, backed up by its power, and we can be a beacon to our wider community. Amen.